Eagles Packers goes back a long way, back to 1960. As a young Eagles fan, which I was at the time, I was a 14-year-old kid just sitting in the end zone seats at Franklin Field. I remember everybody feeling good that, that, that the Eagles got the Packers in the championship game because nobody knew who the Packers were, really. It was a cold, cold day, day after Christmas, and I will still never forget Tommy McDonald catching a pass and crashing into a snowbank in the end zone. And who will ever forget the stars of that game, Norm Van Brocklin and Clarence Peaks and Pete Retzlaff and Bobby Walston and Chuck Bednarik and Maxie Bond and on and on and on. You know, you, you watch the old films and you see Bednarik just making that last tackle and, and sitting on Jim Taylor and watching that clock run down in Franklin Field and just the mayhem that ensued from there. Turned out later that you look back on it and you say, God, what a great team. The Eagles beat in that championship game. But going into it, you thought, who are the Green Bay Packers? Well, the world soon found out. The only team to ever beat the great Vince Lombardi in the playoffs, that's the 1960 Eagles. You looked at it on paper, you think this is a game the Eagles should win, especially at home. But the wild card in any game you played against the Packers in, the, in those years was Brett Favre. When I mean, Brett Favre was capable of winning games by himself, and he was also capable of losing games by himself. The Packers are up 14-0 pretty early in that game, and the feeling that settled over the stadium was one of foreboding. When I'm watching a game, I'm rehearsing what I'm going to say the next day on the radio, and I'm anticipating what the calls are going to be. That game was over. Green Bay won that game. Fourth and 26, you don't make. Fourth and 26, and you say, all right, this is over. You know, there's no way this is happening. It's not a chance. The Eagles are going to lose. It's, it's going to be an awful day on the radio for us that <laughs> fans are going to be unhappy. The cliche is there's no play in the playbook for fourth and 26, but that's true. There really isn't. The thought process is, I'm going to guess Green Bay's got maybe two or three men on the line of scrimmage, and everybody else has got to be back in prevention, and there's no way the Eagles can pull this thing off. Here it is. It's fourth and 26. McNabb is back. He's looking. He is firing. When Donovan lets go the ball, the ball was wobbling. It wasn't that perfect spiral, and I think there's no chance. I remember Freddie Mitchell going up to get the ball. I remember a slight bobble of the ball but then re-grabs the ball, takes it in. I said, no, they just didn't make that first down. This, it wasn't like it was a 29, 30 yard pass. It was about 26 and a half yards. Freddie just gets it. When Freddie came up with it, um, not sure who was more stunned, McNabb, Andy Reid, the fans in the stands. And fourth and 26 was born. Here it is, it's fourth and 26. McNabb is back, he's looking. He is firing, and it is caught by Freddie Mitchell, short of the first, I don't know, did he get it? Yes, he does have a first down, he does. He does have a first down. He's across midfield, and he's into Packer territory at the 46. And the Eagles kick the field goal, sends it to overtime, and in an overtime, Brett Favre, as great a player as he is, he was capable of making big mistakes. And I'll never forget the wounded duck that he threw up there. I mean, I, you know, if there were guys out there who went duck hunting, they were pulling out their guns going, that, that's just, you know, that's easy for me to, to get down. The utter disbelief that Brett Favre threw that ball up like a punt. When Brett Favre threw it up, and I've seen him do it so many times, like, what is he doing? Where is he throwing that ball? And it was so perfect for the Eagles. To this day, I still can't understand what he was thinking or what he was seeing. But, I mean, it just hung in the air like the infield fly rule in baseball. And Brian Dawkins, he may have never had a bigger interception, but he certainly never had an easier one than that one. Far looks, pumps, he is firing deep, 
Brian Dawkins interception. He's at the 35-40. He's at the 45-50. He cuts back. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. He's down to the 33. B. Dawk just made a huge play. Once he intercepted it, I don't think there was much doubt in anybody's mind that the Eagles had the game in hand. What a way to end the game as David Akers has just kicked the field goal that has sent the Eagles into the NFC Championship game as they beat the Green Bay Packers 20-17.